Well, hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John Chovic, and I'm the CTO of Switch Talk Labs. And we're here today to talk to you a whole week about the weather. This is Weather Week at Switch Talk Labs. And for the next four programs, okay, so it's a little more than a week, we're going to be talking about weather and how you can build your own stuff to measure weather and how these instruments work that actually measure the weather. We're looking forward to this today a lot. So let's start out by saying we're gonna talk about five different weather instruments. Today, we're just going to talk about one, and that's the anemometer. But I just wanna quickly run through the other ones. This is a rain bucket. It measures rain, water goes down inside there, and then there's a self-tipping bucket back and forth that measures the amount of rain that comes in. That's a pretty cool instrument. Then we're also going to be talking about this week, a wind vane that determines, of course, the direction of the wind. That's a really pretty cool instrument too. Then we're also going to be talking about a outdoor temperature and humidity sensor that you can out actually calculate the dew point from too, which is pretty cool. That's an AM2315. And finally, we will also be, well, not quite finally, but we'll also be talking about this. And this is the Switch Stock Labs weather board. This has a barometer on it and a whole bunch of other things that will allow you to connect these, all these weather instruments very easily to an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, there's one weather instrument that was kind of missing in that whole list, and that's our friend the anemometer. That's kind of like pronouncing aluminum, anemometer, anemometer, like your mom or something. So this is the anemometer. This is the anemometer we're going to be talking about today. You notice if I blow on it, it turns. These are called cups. And the anemometer circles around and measures wind speed. What we're going to talk about tonight is how this measures wind speed, how it actually works, and how a computer can tell. And then we're also going to talk about other ways you can measure the wind with other kinds of instruments, which are some of which are pretty doggone cool. So, but before we get into that, I have to tell a joke. Okay. <clears throat> this man walks into a bar. Excuse me. Yeah, wrong joke. This horse walks into a bar, and the bartender looks at him and says, hey, why the long face? Okay, that wasn't very good. I'll go back to the science jokes later. Anyway, our friend the anemometer, that's right. Now, the way this works is there's a little reed switch inside. A reed switch is just two little pieces of metal that have a magnet, when a ma or a, above, a magnet is above the reed switch, and every time it rotates, the magnet goes by the reed switch. It pulls those two little contacts together, shorting them together. And that's what our system actually reads. So each time this goes around, that anemometer inside is going click, 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 one time for each rotation. And since we know how far the rotation is, we can measure the time between clicks. That gives us the instantaneous wind speed. To calculate an average wind speed, you know, you kind of average it together. You can look for gusts by looking at the shortest time between clicks. Or if there's no clicks, you know you don't have any wind. So that's pretty easy. But how does a computer deal with this? Remember I just told you that the anemometer clicks. It turns, it shuts that read relay by a magnet going over the top all the time. There's no active electronics in here. That's it. It goes to a plug, which we can plug into a variety of instruments, including the uh, Switch Talk Labs weather board. And this is all part of the what we call the Switch Talk Lab, Labs weather rack. It's three instruments together, three of the instruments you saw there. So how does this work? Well, let me tell you how it works. What we're going to do here is I'm going to put up a little uh, um, I'm going to put up a little white screen here. And uh, we're going to uh, take a look at how this w actually works. And by doing this, I'm going to draw a couple little diagrams. So just hold on a second here while we get this up here. There we go. Let's get me way down in the corner. So I'm kind of the boring part of this. Okay, so how does this work? Let's go look at that. Now, remember I told you that the, every time the anemometer goes around, it actually closes the little read relay. Now, 
we have the line pulled up to the power supply. So it stays at a one. We're going to talk, talk in digital terms here. So we've got it pulled up to a one. The only time it goes to a zero is when that read relay shuts, pulling it to a zero. So you get a waveform out of this that we feed directly into the computer that looks like this. It comes along, it's high, 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 high. And then finally that, that read relay clicks. It comes down like this, stays down there a little while, goes back up. Well, that doesn't tell us very much. The important thing now is we have to look at what happens next. Well, it keeps going over here, and then it goes down again. And boop, comes back up again when the magnet moves past the uh, relay. So now we have some information. What can we get out of that? Now, computers are really good at measuring time. They have clocks on board. They can tell distance between two events. We actually use something called an interrupt. There's other ways to do it, but uh, all we need to talk about is interrupts is it tells the computer when you get this falling edge right over here on this line. So what we do is when we see a falling edge, we mark that. The computer remembers what time it is at that point. We wait all the way over here to another falling edge, falling edge going from one to zero down here. And then we measure the time between point A and point B. And <clears throat> if the divide that by, say it was one click, we know it's about 1.4 kilometers per second or miles per hour or whatever the actual measurement is. And it's, it's in the specification. I just don't remember exactly what it is. But if we know the time between those two things, the closer they get together, the faster the wind speed. Now, that does mean that at some point, you're not going to be able to measure any faster wind speed. But I looked at that at one time, and it's about 4,000 miles an hour. And if we have a 4,000 mile an hour wind, we're not going to be worrying about our Raspberry Pi or our wind gauge or anything like that. These things will be long gone. So a computer is plenty fast enough to measure normal wind speed. So if this gets closer, if the time between A and B is shorter and shorter, faster and faster wind speed. And that's all we measure. Pretty cool, huh? But you want to know something secret? Bumble's bounce. Whoa, no, that's from uh, that's from uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But one of those words is appropriate, and that's bouncing. Turns out this works really well. But if you don't do something special, you're not going to get the right answer. And I'll show you why. Let me clear this off, and I'm going to draw just one of these transitions. Turns out that any kind of a mechanical switch, read switch, the light switch, or the little buttons you have in your board that you uh, push to make your computer do things, those things bounce. Any kind of mechanical switch bounces. The contacts, when they close, they actually go bip, 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 bip. They actually bounce, open, close, open, close, open, close. Our computer is so fast, we'd measure all those. So we've got to do something. Let me show you what the waveform really looks like. It doesn't look like this. Even in the digital realm, it looks more like this. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And finally, it, it will stay down and then go up when, uh, when it goes by. But this right in here, forgive my incredibly cruddy drawing, in here, this is called bouncing the bounce time. And so what you have to do in order to actually measure this, you wait for the first day at edge, you pick that up, and then we measure how long this bouncing is. And it's on the order of maybe 100 milliseconds or, you know, 115 milliseconds. It's a lot less than a second. And so what you have to do is you have to wait the bounce time before you start looking at this signal again. Now, you can debounce this a number of different ways. You can debounce it with a piece of hardware, or you can actually debounce it with a piece of software. It's got to be kind of empirically determined, depending on the kind of pull-ups you have and what's going on in the system. Do you have any interference? But you have to take that into account. So it's not an absolutely trivial piece of software for you to get accurate results on here. And this bounce time probably limits the maximum amount of speed you can get more than um, anything else. This is on the order of, you know, maybe 50 milliseconds or something like that. 
And that will put a limit on how fast this anemometer actually worked, that bounce time. So there you have it. Now we really do understand how an anemometer does really, uh, you know, manage to measure things. Let's get me big on the screen again. It's fun. It's good. So that's how we measure wind speed. But you know what? That's not the only way you can measure wind speed. You can do things like you can put a hot wire in the air. And you know, you've heard of wind chill, right? You know, the wind blows by something, it cools it down. Well, here's the deal. You put a hot wire up there, and if it's a thermistor, which means the, tem which the resistance varies according to what temperature it is, you can actually measure the wind speed by looking at the change of that resistor as the wind blows by it. That's pretty cool. Now, there's other, other ways, too. The, one of my favorite is called a, um, a pressure tube, otherwise known as a wind sock. You can actually measure those things and see how fast the wind is blowing. You can also do it with ultrasonics, you know, like uh, dog whistles or ultrasonic. Well, it turns out that you can put ultrasonics like four in a row, little ultrasonic transmitters and receivers, and by the way the wind is blowing through, you can not only determine the wind speed, if you have enough of the sensors, you can determine the wind direction. That's pretty cool. I like that. Now, one more thing here. You can also use lasers to do that, laser Dopplers. Ooh, I like lasers. But there's one more way to do it, too, and this is the way you do it on airplanes. They're called pitot tubes. And if you take a look at this really closely up here, see there's two little tubes. And we can measure the difference in the um, resistance through the, uh, by the sensor inside those two tubes, and we can determine the wind speed from that. So all sorts of different ways of measuring wind speed. But we're going to stick with this one. So what did we talk about? We talked about a whole bunch of weather instruments. We're going to learn how they work this week. We also talked about a variety of different anemometers and how they work. And we talked about this specific anemometer and how you measure it by measuring the time between clicks. So I guess the right way to end this broadcast is uh, let's create some wind. See you next for Rain Buckets.